This is very important. There are those who take it so far and they try to intimidate you. You see, try to make you say something and they are actually standing on their point. Then in such cases, probably you've given the soft signals and they just wouldn't get it. Then in such cases, you have to be stern and give a stern response and let them know this is a boundary you have crossed and I would appreciate if you take a step backward. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Ennis Alaranikwa, a medical doctor and a communication expert. I want to say a very big thank you to everyone who sent me their birthday greetings from around the world a few days ago. Your messages, your prayers, your videos, the gifts, thank you so much. God bless you, honor you, and increase you mightily. All right, so for the next couple of weeks, I'm making some very important videos on communication. And I hope you stay glued to this channel and watch every one of those videos. Now, if it's your first time on this channel, please subscribe, join the family. And if it's not your first time, like I always say, it is free. Just click the red button beneath, join the family, subscribe, and of course, follow up on all the weekly videos. So today, I am giving you seven tips or seven ways to shut down nosy people. By the way, if you are interested in joining my masterclass on communication, just click the link in the description below and be right there. It contains topics like public speaking, how to use the right verbs in different situations, communicating with different generations, how to know the right way to communicate with them, the right words to use, building your vocabulary, and all sorts of things in details. So I encourage you to sign up for my masterclass and be a part of that. So let's discuss nosy people. You see, this is so important because who are these nosy people? These are people who tend to go beyond their boundaries, to know about your personal life, to get more information about you, what you do, which is not necessary, you see, com I mean, with respect to that situation or that conversation. So these people, is good you have the right techniques, the right skills to shut them out, or else they could interrupt your day and thereby decrease your productivity for a day or even more. So, I'll show you seven ways you can shut them out. So I will read each of those points and I will explain them to you, all right? So the first one, some nosy people aren't interested in your private life. They just want to break up the monotony of their day. For such people, tell them you're busy and give them a task to do. Ask them to lend a helping hand on a task to keep them occupied. So you see those people who they are free, you see, so they have some free time or they want to just unwind from their schedule and they try to interrupt yours. For people like that who you know, they are not trying to get something private or personal from you. Give them something to do. Ask them to help out with something. And if they are being really nosy, most likely they will take an excuse and they will let you be. All right. The second one, if someone nosy asks you a personal question, you can use the flip it back technique. By turning the question back on them, if, if they don't want to share such personal details, they'll be forced to admit their original question was inappropriate. Do you understand? So someone asking you a personal question, flip the question back to them, and if they feel uncomfortable answering it, by themselves, they would just let you be because now they figured they asked the wrong question or at least asked it the wrong way. Number three, if someone knows he asks an intrusive question, you can use the bore them technique. You see, bore them, all right? Give a brief answer, then repeat it till they get the hint and back off. <laughs> Review no hint of frustration but deliver the response in exactly the same way each time. <laughs> so this is very interesting. So someone is asking you an intrusive question, give the same superficial response each time they ask. Keep repeating the same answer 
without showing any hint of frustration from your end. So they'll get the message and they'll let you be. The fourth one, say, why do you ask? See, nosy people fear this question because then you ask, why do you ask? And then they realize they didn't have an answer for that. Then if they gave you an answer for the first one, ask again, why do you ask? Or why do you want to know? <laughs> you see, so this question can disarm nosy people. It makes them pause and the answer they get will reveal their real motive. And the answer they give rather will reveal their real motive. So why do you ask? From the response, you would know if that's a genuine question or someone just being nosy. The fifth one, don't take it personally. You see, some nosy people try to get at you, but you must not reveal any sign of frustration um, or, you know, uneasiness. Just remain as calm as you were before the question came. So by not taking what a nosy person says personally, you'd most likely gain insight into the nosy person's psychology. And this will put you in a stronger position to deal with their behavior in the future. So be relaxed, be relaxed and give your response. When they see you are very relaxed and you're calm, first of all, it helps you to read their body language and understand better why they are asking that question. And then in the future, you know how to deal with such people. So don't take it personally, all right? The sixth one, use gentle teasing. A remark such as, you're far too nosy for your own good sometimes. <laughs> I don't think any nosy person would love to hear such a remark. So you tell them, you're far too nosy for your own good sometimes. And imagine you're saying that and you're smiling, but you're getting the message across. You see, that person may likely get angry and not show up next time. <laughs> so. A remark such as you're far too nosy for your own good sometimes, delivered with a smile and a gentle laugh, can be enough to draw the line under a nosy person's question. You got it? So you are saying, I know what you're trying to do, but you're saying it in a very nice and a kind way, not angry, <laughs> okay? Because that way you've not offended them. I mean, at least they can't hold you to the way you said it but you got the message across. Even they can repeat to somebody else because they'll probably be exposing themselves and showing themselves as being nosy. So they'll just let you be, most likely. <laughs> All right. Now the seventh one, if a nosy person crosses the line into bullying, take it seriously. When they ask questions with the intention of making you feel uncomfortable or threatened, enforce your personal boundaries and let them know their behavior will have consequences. Now, this is very important. There are those who take it so far and they try to intimidate you. You see, try to make you say something and they are actually standing on their point. Then in such cases, probably you've given the soft signals and they just wouldn't get it. Then in such cases, you have to be stern and give a stern response and let them know this is a boundary you have crossed and I would appreciate if you take a step backward. Now this is very important because like I said earlier, these people can reduce your productivity. They can, I have a video on the four quadrants of time and it shows how to do the right thing at the right time, things that are important and not urgent. So they are all there. I wanna put those, the link will show up right now above the screen what that video because the nosy people can put you in quadrant one quadrant three or quadrant four they can keep you there in one of those four or one of those three quadrants which are not healthy they are not as healthy if you live most of your life in those three quadrants they're not as healthy for your results so you need to keep them away so that you can focus you can live more in quadrant two where you do things that are important but not urgent all the explanation is in the video I spoke about. So, hope you learned something from the video today. This is just the introduction to what I'll be sharing with you for the next couple of weeks on communication. 
I guarantee you, you'll be glad you watch these videos. So stay glued to this channel. Don't miss it for anything. And remember, if you'd like to join my masterclass on communication, effective communication skills, follow the link in the description below and sign up. So hopefully I'll see you in my masterclass. But if not, see you in the next video next week. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful week.